Hey yo and welcome! I'm Will and today I'm gonna be redesigning characters from the Owl House. It's a Disney cartoon about a human entering a magical world where she learns how to become a witch. And it has to be one of my all-time favorites. There's so many cool characters, but also I am not yet insane enough to attempt to redesign all of them, so I picked out three for now. The victims, I mean the characters I'll be redesigning this time are Luz, Ida and Amity. Starting off with none other than Luz Noceda herself. The human who stumbles onto the boiling aisles and learns how to use magic. Right off the bat I try to figure out how to keep her face looking like Luz from the show while still being in my art style. I kept her round upper lip as well as her big excited looking eyes. The first real change was with the hair. Her hair in the show is messy but pretty straight and I wanted to go with a more curly look. For her outfit I absolutely had to keep the funky cat hoodie. It still has the little cat ears on the hood, you just can't see them in this pose. But for the close-up I made later, I had her wear the hood up because it's cute. And I needed to show the cat ears. I also gave her long jeans with her shirt tucked in because it gives a nice shape. And I love me some good shapes. The jeans are a bit torn up and also have some patches on one knee that are vaguely hard shaped. Implying that those pants have been through some stuff. But Luz likes them a lot, so she fixed them up to the best of her ability. I thought it would be cute to give Luz something that she could also add to later outfits as the show progresses, so I gave Luz a star necklace inspired by the star that Good Witch Azura, Luz's fictional idol, has on her dress. So yeah, the stars appear again later. Then I gave her some boots and um, I know you might be going, what are those, Will? And I have a perfectly acceptable explanation, okay? I wanted Luz to have these typical boots that you use for hiking and stuff because this design is meant to represent pretty much the beginning of the show, or more precisely the very first episode. And because Luz was meant to be going to summer camp before all the shenanigans happened, I thought it would make sense for her to wear some boots to run around through the forest with. I have no idea how summer camps work by the way, I've never been to any camp in my whole life. But that doesn't explain the elephant in the room. My idea was that while Luz was running after Albert, right before getting onto the boiling aisles, she gets her left boot stuck and doesn't have time to go and grab it. So essentially, she arrives on the boiling aisles, not only flabbergasted, but also with one barefoot. Now the next question, where the hell does the croc come from? Well conveniently for me, Ida literally pulls out a croc right after meeting Luz in the show. Like, literally. That's literally what happened. So yeah, Luz now has one solid boot and one croc which has suspiciously good color matching with the rest of her outfit for the fact that it came out of Ida's trash pile. Maybe the croc actually belonged to Luz and it went missing a year ago, who knows. I also originally wanted to give her a backpack of some sort since she was supposed to go to summer camp, which means she probably had clothes and stuff with her. But oh well, I kind of forgot about the backpack, so let's pretend I never said anything. For the overall colors, I stuck pretty close to the original design, but I made her shirt striped so it didn't look so empty. Now next up, I'm going to be drawing her in the Hexite school uniform. For the uniform, I wanted to change a couple things because personally, I think the colored arms and legs make it look a little bit silly. It's a cartoon, so it's fine, but for my redesign, I wanted to change it up a bit. First of all, I changed the shape of the cape. And also, I changed the tunica thingy they wear a little bit. I kept the belt strap they have in the show to hold the tunica in place, but I also wanted that to have some utility, so the thought is that students could attach pouches and whatnot to it. Though in this example, it was difficult to show off because of Luz's hand positioning in this pose. So just imagine it for me. The colors were the main thing I wanted to change about the uniform though, or rather how the colors of the different tracks are displayed. In the show, it's just the arms and legs of the uniform that have the signature color of the track. For all of you non-witches, it's essentially like majors the students pick in the school. I just don't like this very much visually, so I tried to make them more interesting. I kept the dark rays as the main color so that the uniform would work well with any of the different track colors. And no, I did not design all of the track uniforms because the redesigns already took me long enough. <laughs> I decided I would be doing the uniform loose gets after being put into the potions track 
as an example, and then also the one she gets after she's able to study in all tracks. The arms and legs of the uniform are now a light grey, because I wanted the track colors to be on sort of embroidery on the cape and tunica. Originally the idea was that the embroidery would be shaped like something that resembles the track. In the case of potions, I wanted the cape to have bubbles embroidered around the edges. But that didn't really look too great, so I changed it to simple stripes. The bubble motif ended up staying on the sleeves only. I did add an embroidered emblem of the potion track symbol onto the front of the cape though. Then I went to design the uniform for all tracks that Luz gets and uh, boy, that was not easy. The single track uniform works really well in my opinion, so I thought it shouldn't be too difficult to make this uniform work too. I was wrong. Changing the yellow color to rainbow didn't improve it at all. It just made it look all over the place to the point where I think I actually prefer the original uniform for her. The only innovative thing about this uniform is that I changed the button on the cape to be a star, like the necklace I gave Luz in her casual outfit. Everything else just looks, uh, thanks, but no thanks. The cape also has a winter version, which is longer and stuffed with fur, or maybe it's actually Ida's hair. Who knows? Also, you may have noticed that Luz found a second boot, so she doesn't have to go to school with one croc. It's a different boot though. Maybe Ida or King got her a boot that looked close enough to the other one, as a gift. I'm also realizing that a concerning amount of the characters I've redesigned are wearing boots now, and I'm not sure what to think about that. Boot supremacy, I don't know. But yeah, the idea with the uniform is that every student can wear their own shoes to differentiate them just a little bit. For the close-up, I drew loose together with King. While I was sketching this, I felt like I forgot how to draw mouse for a moment, which is weird because I love drawing mouse in weird expressions. This was probably caused by me wanting to instantly line the rough sketch without defining everything first, so yeah, I made another sketch. Lo and behold, that did the trick. Now about King, I know this is a redesign video, but I don't want to redesign King because honestly, he is perfect. I don't think I could change anything about him, and also I'm not super great at drawing anything that's not humanoid, so yeah, he's just this normal, adorable self. Though I had no idea how his mouth works underneath the skull, so I just bullshitted my way through. Might not be accurate to the show, but I wanted him to have his mouth open, so eh. For the pose, I wanted Luz to have her cat hoodie up and do the nya pose. You know, like nya. I can't believe I just said that. Anyways, I also gave her a slightly different outfit here. She's wearing some overalls and fingerless gloves because I said so. The cat ears on the hoodie ended up looking a lot more realistic than they do in the show, and while that's probably hard to do for a hoodie in real life, I like how it looks, so we are keeping it. Then I shaded the close-up for no other reason than to flex, and that's loose. I know her casual clothes don't look super different from the OG outfit, but I think it's cool anyways. She does have the most boring redesign in this video, so trust me, it'll only get better from here. Now the school uniform, however, I love. At least the single track one, we do not talk about the multi-track uniform. Moving on to the most powerful witch and the most wanted criminal on the Boiling Isles, Ida the Owl Lady. She may have grey hair because of her curse, but she's not that old yet. First of all, I tried to give Ida a body type that's a bit more buff, which was honestly harder than I expected. I feel like I've gotten a bit rusty with body types, but maybe that's also because I just haven't drawn as much as I used to, no idea. Anyways, Ida is a self-proclaimed bad girl, and bad girls kick some butt. So even though she can probably fix most of her problems with magic, I still wanted her to have some muscle to pack a punch. Also, in case I ever make a part 2 where I redesign Lilith, I would want her to be lankier than Ida. For her hair, I had some really fun references picked out beforehand. I still wanted it to be big and fluffy because we all know how much stuff Ida carries in there, but I just wanted to give it some more flavor, so I went for the messy, half tied back look with braids. At that point, I already had some friends simping for her, so I knew I was on the right track. For the actual outfit, if you know me, it should come to no surprise to you that I gave her a blazer. Sorry, not sorry, I love suits. I love drawing them, I love how they look on people, 
and Ida actually does have one or two outfits in the show that have a blazer, so we know it's right up her alley too. I didn't want to go full suit though, so she rolled up the sleeves of the blazer and she's wearing a dress underneath. I tried a few variations regarding the skirt, but the cleaner cut versions just didn't really fit her vibe. Especially together with the blazer, it just kind of looked like Ida was working at a bank or something, so I had to go with a more messy approach. The idea was to make it look like it's a wing, but at the same time look torn. Though after I succeeded at making that work, I realized that it basically looked like the dress in Ida's original outfit, so I made some changes in order to make the wing theme more visible. I added some feathery looking parts of the dress to where she rolled up her blazer sleeves. And underneath the blazer she has a belt to which she can attach a variety of useful things. In this case, either the elixir that keeps her curse at bay or potions to make stuff explode. I just hope she doesn't confuse the two one day. She's holding onto her palisman staff with good old Albert at the top. I also didn't really change much about him, I just gave him more detailed feet, which sounds kind of sus to say it like that. Anyways, during the line art, I gave Ida some sharp lashes to stab her enemies, because you never know when you might need it. For the colors, I wanted to go with the gray and red color scheme at first, because I love how it looks in Ida's original outfit. But then I wanted to try something else and end up going with this yellow, orange, brown kind of vibe instead. I usually don't gravitate towards warm color schemes like this, so it's cool to see I can work with colors other than purple. It's a very fall colored look, which I honestly love for Ida. I probably put way too much effort into shading this one compared to Luz, not gonna lie. Man, I've spent a lot more time on this video than I originally wanted to. My goal was to work on every character for 3 hours max, but uh, <laughs> that didn't happen. Yeah, I have a tendency to go overboard with these videos when I probably don't need to. But yeah, back to the art. I tried to figure out how the hell I can have Ida on the sheet twice without it taking too much space with her holding the staff and all, and I had the brilliant idea of just cutting Ida's arm off. It does canonically happen in the show too, so you know. I did still make the whole sheet longer in the end because of the close-up, but you know, with two Ida's holding a staff, it would have been even longer. While I worked on Ida's design, we were rewatching The Owl House and we got to the episode with Harpy Ida, and it made me debate really hard about whether or not to make a Harpy Ida redesign as well. Harpy Ida just looks really cool, I mean, she said it herself. This is a hot look. For now, I decided against that, but if you guys want to see more Owl House redesigns, then I might end up making a Harpy Eater redesign for the, uh, how do I say this without getting bonked? Monster huggers among you guys. So let me know if you'd like to see a part 2 of this, and which characters you'd want to see most. If I do Harpy Eater, I will most likely also be drawing Lilith and Harpy Lilith alongside her too. And if you'd like to see little sneak peeks and updates for upcoming videos, like a potential second part of this video, come and join my Discord. It's a fun and comfy place to share art and lucies. Also, we have an Inktober event going on right now. I promise we don't bite. Myself excluded. I probably should have taken it easy for Ida's close-up, but I had this really cool pose in mind with Ida showing off, so I could not stop myself. She's doing wild magic here, mixing different kinds of magic together to show that she's not in a witch coven, besides the bad girl coven of course. The sketching went so smoothly that I had no regrets about this ambitious pose. I wanted to show off the curse, like she completely forgot that it can mess with her magic for a moment, so you can see feathers sprouting from her arm, the gemstone on her chest swirling in grey and the magic itself going black and weird. In the show, I don't think her skin color changes when the curse happens but I didn't want the dark feathers to be so contrasting to her skin, so I gave her these dark stripes going up her arm that grow when the curse gets worse. Also, small detail, but her nails are usually blunt, but when the curse activates, they turn sharp. Sharp nails are awesome, okay? Good thing she has a belt with the elixirs, am I right? Or were those the explosion potions? Only one way to find out, I guess. I also added some little bits of jewelry to her hair at the end. I shaded the close-up, spent way too much time on it for sure, but it turned out cool so I can't be too mad about it. I'm pretty happy with how Ida's design came out. It still looks very Ida, but it has a different energy to it. 
Now on to a character I was very much looking forward to redesign, Amity Blight. She's also gonna get two outfits for plot reasons, so let's get into it. I wanted Amity to be a little bit taller than Luz and definitely lankier. This doesn't have anything to do with her not eating properly or her being pressured to have a quote unquote perfect body, but rather with her being stressed out all the time and also just because she's genetically thin. One of the main reasons for Amity's stress is her mom. Those of you who've seen the show know that her mom, Odalia, cares a lot more about how their family is perceived than if they're actually happy. Amity is under a lot of pressure to perform well at school and to keep up the facade of being the perfect daughter. So yeah, that's why I gave her this kind of body type. I have noticed that I've mainly been drawing slim characters for all my redesigns and I'd like to draw more diverse body types because I actually also enjoy drawing curvy and plus size bodies. So I will try to tackle that in my future redesign videos. Now about Amity's outfit. I wanted her casual outfit to reflect the fact that she's trying really hard to please Odalia. So it needed to look neat, elegant and like they have money. And yes, that means I gave her a vest. Her mom and siblings are also wearing vests, so I basically just made her fit in with them. Underneath the vest, she's wearing a button-up with poofy shoulders because that just radiates rich mean girl energy. And of course, she's also wearing the gemstone with which her mom can talk to her, though I added a cravat to it to make it look extra snobby. Her clothes are meant to look tight, which symbolizes her suffocating in them because she hates wearing them and only does it to keep up appearances. Then I tried out different skirts to give her. One version was a long pencil skirt that fit the suffocation theme really well. However, to me, that made her look like a secretary, so I went with the long A-line skirt instead. This whole outfit makes her look 10 times older than she actually is, which is honestly kind of a vibe. I imagine with Odali as a mom, any kid would have to grow up pretty quickly or do a good job of pretending to. With Amity's hair, I actually had no clue what I would be going for for the first outfit. I started off with giving her the hairline she has in the show and tried a couple different things. I gave her a ponytail with shaved sides at first, which was definitely inspired by Odalia's own haircut. Then I tried a version that looks like Amity's original haircut, but if it was let down and gelled back. And then I adjusted that version a bit to have her hair fall down to the sides instead of going back. I could not decide between these haircuts and because Amity is getting a second outfit with a different haircut anyways, I just drew her bald and gave her some quote unquote wig options. But like, she's not actually meant to be bald. The colors for the outfit were also very much inspired by the colors Amity's siblings wear, though I struggled a lot trying to figure out where to put which color. I had like three main variations that I all liked a lot, but I eventually decided on the one with the white vest. Her hair in all the variations so far is dyed dark green at the top and light green on the sides, with her actual brown boots showing. I imagine the ponytail one is the oldest haircut, so she cut her hair at some point, Maybe because it was too annoying to take care of, I don't know. Her sides would still be pretty short in both of the other haircuts, which you can see at the nape of her neck, but it's otherwise fully covered up by the long hair from the top. Amity's second look is supposed to be for when she manages to care less about what Odalia wants and she prioritizes her own happiness. For this version, I had a really cool reference for the haircut and I'm not sure what it's actually called. It basically has the haircut short in the back at an angle, which gives it a cool silhouette. However, I didn't really know what the hell to do with her bangs, so I had to mess around with those for a while. Until I decided to go with something that resembles Amity season 2 bangs. As for her clothes, I wanted them to be the opposite of suffocating like the other outfit. I also wanted them to have this typical cute witchy vibe without literally screaming hello I am a witch. I tried a couple of different combos with some dresses, sweaters, pants and skirts. Honestly most of these could have worked fine but I was not satisfied so I kept trying other combinations until I arrived at a spaghetti dress with a thin metal belt that has a moon pendant on it. I wanted to include the moon because I wanted something from Amity's OG casual outfit to be in there too. Under the dress, she's also wearing a wide neck top. I don't know if that's what you call them, I actually don't know that much about fashion. <laughs> she's wearing some leggings as well and then some comfy boots. 
I gave her a bit more jewelry like the necklace and bracelet, but most importantly I added a star pendant onto the belt as well. I imagine Luz gave it to her after finding out they both love Good Witch Azura, and Amity put it on her belt when she started developing a crush on Luz. On that note, I'm not sure if it's just me, but I feel like both of my Amity's look a bit older than Luz. Honestly, I'm not surprised about this because I don't think I ever really draw characters that aren't adults, so I'm more surprised that I think Luz looks her actual age. But yeah, if Amity looks older than Luz to you, that's not intentional, it just kinda happened. Anyway, I made Amity's dress sparkly like the night sky, and then added some additional star patterns to it. Then I tried to figure out her top, I made it striped with purple, but then felt that it would look too close to Luz's own shirt, so I tried some other patterns, but eventually settled on the stripes and just changed their colors. And now it's low-key bi-flag colored, so we vibe. Actually, I'm not 100% sure if Amity is bi in the show. For the second outfit, I also changed Amity's facial expression. I remember watching another person redesign Amity, also pretty good video by the way, and they said something about how they didn't like that Amity's eye shape changes in the show from when she's a mean girl to when she becomes actually nice. While re-watching the show, I noticed that it's actually not the case at all. All that changed is her expression. When we first meet her, she's unhappy with her life, she doesn't really care about her quote-unquote friends, so she looks depressed with her eyes half-lidded like nothing really matters. Pretty much whenever she has a nice moment, her eyes just open up and look much more round, and this slowly starts to become her normal look as she makes new friends and turns more independent. I tried to convey the same thing here. I didn't really change her eye shape, but the expression of her eyes. With a close-up, I had this cute idea of her trying on clothes she likes for the first time, presumably in secret. So this is essentially in between both of the full body designs. She still has her green hair, but it's the beginning of her starting to figure out what she herself likes wearing. In this case, I tried to recycle one of the full body outfit versions I discarded, which is a sweater and short pants with a belt. I also gave her sunglasses in the sketch, but I discarded those because I thought they were a bit too much. So yeah, the pose is her looking at her sweater. I experimented around with the colors for the sweater for a while. My first idea was for it to be white with black cats on it, and then I had the idea to make the sweater blue with stars on it, and then I made the cats white. I also put a little moon on her sleeve. I really love all of these Amity versions because they just look so different from each other. The haircut I gave her for the second outfit looks so cute, and I would 100% steal this sweater from the close-up. Honestly, if I ever get to make clothing merch, this one might be on the list. Now here's all of their designs together. Looking at Ida and especially Amity, I kind of wish I came up with something more creative for Luz, but oh well, her designs are still cute even if it's not super different from the OG. The single croc is still slaying though. Not gonna lie, I think the close-ups of all the redesign videos I've made so far would make for really cool stickers. This is a little bit off topic, but I at least wanted to mention it in this video. My next video will very likely be an OC animation meme. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys think about him. After that, I might post an art or design video that relates to him, but then I'll probably get back to redesigning another series. But until then, if you guys love the Owl House, Chances are you'd also love my Gravity Falls redesign video. And if you've already watched that video, here's another one. Thank you for watching, special thanks for the cool fan art. Will out.